I think we're, yes, we're now recording. As we prepare for worship, we just spend a few moments. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Loving God, we give you this time and we ask you bless our fellowship together. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit and make us receptive to your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is from Singing the Faith number 37, For the Seeker. You're calling us, and so we are gathered here. You're building us into a house of prayer. Stories of grace are told, the sacred space where miracles unfold. And praises rise from the offering of our lives. Let's fill this house, let's fill this house.
So let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, as we fill our own homes with praise, we gather this morning separate but united by the power of your Holy Spirit to worship you. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us wherever we are, that you bless us, that you invite us to be part of your story. That by your grace and the enormous love that you have for us, we are your children. And just as children make mistakes as they learn and find their way, we make mistakes as well. And sometimes we are less than the people you have called us to be. Sometimes the world gets in the way. Our thoughts and actions are sinful and we fall short of your glory. And for that we are sorry. We bring those times where this past week we have sinned, <clears throat> acknowledging our humanity, but so grateful for your sovereignty. So grateful that by your blood on the cross, <clears throat> your death and resurrection, you rose again triumphant. And that when we repent of our sins, when we ask for forgiveness, you hear our prayer and we are a forgiven people. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, God, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Anoint us now that we might know your blessing and your forgiveness. Be with us as we worship this morning. We are here to worship you. To say that you are our God. Come Holy Spirit. Unite us by your grace and your love. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Um, Stuart and I both felt we, we like a, a good old sing. And uh, this is one of those that you can, uh, you can sing to your heart's content safe in the knowledge that you're probably on mute and it's only your household that gets to hear your dulcet tones. So join in and uh, let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God our Father.
So just uh, a few very quick notices and reminders before we have our Bible reading. I should have done these at the, the outset, really. Um, when we finish today, I thought it would be nice if we could spend more time talking together, especially as there are strangers uh, amongst us. Visitors or guests sounds better than strangers. So um, those of you who want to stay after the service is finished for a chat, uh, we'll probably do a couple of breakout rooms so we're not all on one screen and hopefully we'll end up in a room with somebody we've never met before and we can all have a, a conversation um, about how well or not we are coping with lockdown and actually how we miss fellowshipping with each other at this time. And also just uh, a reminder is now we would normally be passing around the offering basket or bag. It's um, your offerings are coming in and I know our treasuries are very grateful as are, am I. Um, but just a reminder that if you are still holding your collection, um, perhaps it might be a good time to try and get it to a treasurer or somebody as opposed to waiting to the church to reopen. Um, if you can't get it to anybody and obviously hold on to it until our church is reopened. Uh, and just a plug for standing orders. Um, if you are able to pay by standing orders, then that makes life a lot easier for everyone. Um, I don't think there's anything else I really need to say at this moment. I'm just having a quick look and see if anybody's got anything they want to say. If not, I will ask uh, first Heather, and Sam, if they can unmute themselves as they bring our Old Testament reading. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the reading is taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, reading from verses 1 to 10. The Lord calls Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord and the Eli. In those, days, the word, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli, said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if the Lord calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. <coughs> so Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of everyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli and all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be, be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. 
Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that the Lord told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. I just asked Marge if she would unmute herself and bring our gospel reading. The reading is from John chapter 1 verses 43 through to the end. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we've found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching him, he said of him, Here is a true Israelite, in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Amen. We sing again a, uh, this is a relatively new him uh, if you were on before uh, quite early before the start of the service you would have heard this played through so it's familiar with you uh, it's actually from uh, volume six of songs of fellowship so we won't find it in singing the faith i see the work of your hand I hear the sound of your voice 
All at once it's a gentle and thundering noise Oh God, all that you are is so just wondering uh, as I was listening to the chorus of that song if you've ever been overwhelmed by God if you've ever been in that place in that time where you have been so much in God's presence that you just feel overwhelmed by the love of God just taking hold of you and dragging you up perhaps out of a pit of despair or just propelling you forward but just if you've never been overwhelmed by God, if you've never been in that space where God's been uh, so present that you just can't do anything 
without just feeling the awe, then uh, I urge you just to seek that, seek that presence, seek that place where you are overwhelmed by God. Father God, be with us now as we listen for your voice amongst my words. Open our hearts and open our minds to receive your teaching. Lord, loosen my tongue so that the words I speak are your words inspired by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I suddenly find myself with uh, about three sermons that I could preach all at once uh, and three completely different topics. Uh, I began this week preparing to do a service uh, based on our gospel reading from, um, from John, looking at Philip and Nathaniel and, and going on about how it was a, an intentional ministry, how Jesus went out to find Philip and Philip went out to find Nathaniel. Uh, and I thought we'd, we'd go down that route and look about how we could perhaps be more intentional in the way that we go about telling people about Christ, sharing that good news. When I came this morning uh, to prayer to focus on the message for this morning, I got stuck with the reading from Samuel. Uh, I did some uh, bullet point notes uh, just to make sure I didn't ramble on for 45 minutes just to try and keep it succinct and to the point. And I was struck by this reading in Samuel. And I think it's one of those ones that we've read and perhaps heard quite a few times. I know certainly that once I start hearing it, I can almost recite it. I've heard it that many times. And I just started to look at some of the facts and details of this story. We don't know uh, how old Samuel is when we come to this story. Um, God called Samuel in a night and he is still referred to as the boy, but we don't know how old he was. So we don't know, probably somewhere between 10 and 12, if we, we go back to sort of those early historians. But we have this young boy and he's living in a time where we are told where there aren't many visions. The word of the Lord is sadly lacking and there's none of the great things going on that we read about here earlier in the Old Testament or we read about later on. He's in this fallow time where nothing seems to be happening. And he's a young boy and he's lying in his bed when suddenly the voice of God called him by name. Now, I was thinking this morning, did God sound exactly like Eli when he was calling Samuel? Uh, and that's why Samuel didn't recognize him. Or was it the fact that alone in that tent of meeting, just him and Eli, he wasn't expecting any other voice and he was pulled from his sleep. So in his sort of befuddled way, he wasn't really thinking about, well, this voice doesn't sound like what I would normally hear. So he gets up and he goes, as you would imagine, to Eli and say, you called me. Uh, and Eli, being a, a very good, devout man of God, um, doesn't recognise it was God calling him at all. Uh, and in fact, it wasn't until the third time that Eli realised that God was calling Samuel. But again, let's not be too harsh on Eli. He is, after all, ministering in a time where the voice of God is sadly lacking and where visions are almost obsolete. But Samuel was fortunate in the fact that he had a wise elder to point him in a direction. To tell Samuel to go back to bed and then when the voice calls to say, speak to Lord, your servant is listening. And I was thinking about this bit that we've heard so many times about how many times we've heard this Samuel go to Eli, go back to bed, go back to Eli, go back to bed, and then suddenly that realisation that it is God speaking and calling. And I wonder whether how many times we've heard this preached upon where we get this uh, applied to ourselves. Do we hear God calling us? Are we really listening? Do we misunderstand it when God calls? 
the thoughts that I had this morning is the fact that each one of us here has been called by God. At some point in our life, God has called us by name and asked us to do something. Every single one of us. But it's whether we've listened, it's whether we've recognised that, that call. Because we have all been called at some point. For some of us, it's quite obvious that we've listened and answered that call. Um, what's not so obvious, perhaps, is the number of times that I and others like me ignored that call um, before we were brave enough to answer it. So the question this morning and the thing to put you now, I could almost make this like a quiz because I've got a list of seven questions which I've written down. Um, but I'm not going to quiz you and I'm not going to get you to write down your answers. Um, but it's just some pointers for us to think about as we go along. And the first question that I want us to think about is how often have we missed God's call on our lives because we have not been listening properly? And it's a big thing to think about because as Christians, as people who attend church quite faithfully, and you know, as we read our Bibles and we pray every day, I hope, um, if you don't read your Bible and pray every day, you should. So that's the first takeaway from you. But as Christians, we're gonna say, yes, we are going to listen to God's voice. But so many times we don't stop to listen. Samuel came from his bed to his master because he wasn't listening correctly. He heard a voice, but he didn't listen to the voice properly. He didn't listen enough to recognize that it was God calling him. So when we say that we don't hear God, what we're really saying is we are not listening correctly to hear God. We need to take that bold step. Perhaps we could sit there and go, speak law for your servant is listening. Perhaps we can create a space where we can hear God speaking to us. But we need to do something more than just sit, recite prayers that we do all the time and read familiar scriptures. The other question that I put is, have we ever mistaken the voice of God for something else? Now, this is perhaps not such a, a, an easy one to sort of to pick out. But often we do things or don't do things because we believe we are doing what God has told us to do. We mistake our own internal desires, our own wants for God's voice. And we need to challenge that. If we think God is speaking to us when we listen, then we need to challenge and make sure that we are listening to God and not listening to ourselves. It's a question I want you to consider and think about, uh, but not one that we can really unpack in sort of 10, 15 minutes on a Zoom church service. But here's one that perhaps you might want to think about. Samuel was fortunate in the fact that he had Eli to direct him. And have you ever had a wise elder, somebody that you look up to and respect, tell you something that is from God? Point you in a direction, but you've chosen to ignore them because what they've asked you to do has made you feel uncomfortable. Because what they say is from God for you, you kind of think, well, that's definitely not for me. Because sometimes God speaks to us in the voices of people around us, and God asks us to do things that we don't think we are capable of doing. God asks us to do things which we find are uncomfortable. But God calls us and asks us to do things. Sometimes God asks us to do things and we're like, yes, I'm glad God's asked me to do this because I'm going to go rejoicing to do this because I'm quite excited about it. Uh, but my experience tells me that that is the exception to the rule, that normally God calls us to a place. And when God speaks to us, to somebody, uh, we often 
don't listen as strongly or don't take it as a voice from God because we are expecting this big booming voice which creates earthquakes. Eli was a frail man, pretty much confined to his bed, lost his eyesight, unable to hear. But in that frail voice, he spoke wisdom to Samuel, which changed the course of things to come. So if you've spoken and you've had words from a wise elder, then perhaps just go back and revisit them and see what they say. This is all about being called by God. This is all about listening to God's voice and doing things. In a church where we are locked down and we are away from our buildings, where we don't fellowship in the same way, where we don't perhaps hear the voice or the good news in the way that we've become used to. What are you being called to do? What is that voice of God telling you to do? My challenge to you this morning is to be brave enough to listen to that voice. I'm challenging you to be like Samuel this morning, to go into your prayers, to go into your quiet places, your meditations, wherever you come into God's presence, and to say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Let us pray. Loving God, give us the strength and courage to listen for your voice. Give us the strength and courage to respond to your call from all of us. Lord, guide us and teach us and give us your wisdom. So that as a person and as a church, we can grow and influence the, the society around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come into towards our time of intercessions, I just put the share screen on, we are going to sing again a song which will bring us into that point of thinking about the world around us. Again, it's a, a new one, not from uh, Singing the Faith. Hear our cry, O King of Heaven. Can heal our land, Christ alone, our 
And so as we stand in Christ, we bring before him our prayers of intercession. Um, I'm using a book written by uh, Michaela Youngston, one of the previous presidents of the conference. It's from The Weaver, The Word and The Wisdom. Let's pray. Spirit of God, your will is to draw your people closer in community with you and with each other. In our prayers this morning, we remember that at present we cannot be with each other, that we are divided by circumstance. But we thank you, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, we come closer to you. We pray for those places and people who are divided by prejudice, misunderstanding, and fear. We remember your creation, made diverse and complex. Systems of life in fragile balance. We recognize the damage caused by our human greed, by the ignorance of the consequences of our actions. and by our inability to read the signs of decay. We pray for your creation, Lord. We pray that we would be excellent stewards of all that you have given us. Show us, Lord, how we can be a voice in what seems like a wilderness. Show us how we can demonstrate good, eco-friendly living. And in this time of pandemic, as travel, global travel and motor car travel is less, we pray for a rebirthing of your earth. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. We remember humanity made diverse and complex, designed to live as communities. We recognize division and brokenness between nations, communities and individuals. We recognize loneliness and isolation in this time of pandemic. And we see the consequences of war and conflict, greed and hatred. We pray for those parts of the world, Lord, caught up in battle. For the innocent who have no say, have no voice, we pray. We pray for those parts of the world where because of division and brokenness, the virus is raging. Be with them, we pray. We remember refugees and asylum seekers, victims of racism, homophobia, and prejudice of all kinds. And we heard this morning in the news that incidents of homophobic abuse are rising in London. Holy God, 
Bring your peace. Bring your love. And bring your comfort to all who might be victims of any abuse. We pray for families and relationships that struggle to stay together or in touch, especially in these times. We pray for families who have lost loved ones and are unable to grieve as we would normally. We pray for victims of domestic violence and abuse, especially at this time behind closed doors. Bring your peace and your love and your comfort to all those who suffer. Spirit of God, hear our prayer. We remember the body of Christ, made diverse and complex, called into being by the Holy Spirit. We recognize the disunity in the church, where the words we use and the traditions we live by seem to matter more than the quality of our relationships. And Lord, in this time of pandemic, we pray that our words and our traditions would come together as a holy offering, a holy sacrifice to your living word. We see the consequences of our unwillingness to listen to and learn from each other. Lord, in this time of pandemic, help us to be willing to listen and to learn from each other. Your church, universal, called into being by the Holy Spirit. We pray for us as part of the body of Christ throughout the world, for our brothers and sisters, as we seek unity, as we pray for unity by the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless us, Lord, as your body, your church here on earth. Show us how we might be empowered and bold, how we might build one another up so that all may know and see your glory. Spirit of God, hear our prayers. Join together as we say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to go into the world from this place. Um, Our final hymn is Teach Me to Dance to the Beat of Your Heart.
um, as we seek to hear from God, as we make space and time in our lives to hear from God, and that may be through others. It may be in the still voice of the scriptures. But let's be attentive and intentional about hearing that voice that we might dance to God's tune and not to our own tune. So the closing hymn is number 477 in Singing the Faith. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. your spirit teach me to walk in the light of your presence teach me to dance to the beat of your heart teach me to love with your heart of compassion teach me to trust in the word of your promise teach me to hope in the day of your coming So with a spring in our step and 
the love of God within us, we go from this place. Um, a blessing for you this morning from the covenant service, actually. Um, funny how you discover things year on year and each time there's a new revelation, something that God speaks into our hearts. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do more for us than we can ask or think. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sam, for all that. You can all unmute yourself now and we can have a, a cacophony of hellos. And for those of you who want to stay in and have a, a better chat, I'll see if I can work out through these breakout rooms and uh, we'll find some new people to speak to this morning. Um, and you can leave, feel free to leave whenever you like. Thank you very much, Stuart. It's been lovely to share with you guys this morning and I'm sure um, all of the people from... The section have enjoyed and been blessed by your words to us this morning. So it's been fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. 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 Bye, Joel. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Sam. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye Janet. Bye. Lovely to Bye, see everyone. you. Bye, everyone. God bless. Bye. 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 So for those of us that are staying on, I will uh, create some breakout rooms so we can have a chat. <laughs> Uh, 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 join, join if you don't. <laughs> oh, that's good. There we go. I'm going to leave. Oh. You want that to change the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm.